Well, boys, we did it. We're not just lost in space. We are Astra lost in space. Earth below us, drifting, falling, floating, weightless, calling, calling home. Hey guys, welcome to my review for Astra Lost in Space, a sci-fi adventure manga written and illustrated by Kenta Shinohara, which was serialized in Shonen Jump Plus between 2016 and 2017. Also, apologies in advance, my house is currently under anal assault by Dorian. Hopefully that doesn't come through in the recording, we'll, we'll have to see. So Astra Lost in Space takes place in the year- Ah, shit. 2063 and follows a group of high school students who are on their way to space camp. Those students being a, a fine bunch of folks who come from all different walks of life. You have Kanata, Ares, Zach, Quittery, Luca, Olgar, Yunhua, and Charles. They are also accompanied by Quittery's younger adopted sister because how space camp works is, is the, the students are dropped off on the planet like you know a few, a few thousand light years away no big deal and they're left there for a few days with a task to complete. This group's task being to take care of Funicia, this little girl. Now aside from Zack and Quittery who are childhood friends, most of these people don't know each other at all. So so it's gonna be a fun time. Every, everyone's all hyped for, for space camp. Things get off to a smooth start as they're brought to this planet. They, they get their bearings. They're like, all right, this is cool, cool, we can do this. But then all of a sudden a wormhole shows up. They all get sucked into it and they are suddenly transported thousands of light years away. They find themselves floating in deep space and they realize that they're kind of fucked. As luck would have it though, when they come out of the wormhole, they're actually in the close proximity of a spaceship. No one knows what this spaceship is doing here, thousands of light years away from their home. But eh, well, whatever, they all climb aboard and uh, figure out what the hell's going on. By checking the ship's computers, they realize that they are 5,000 light years away from their home planet. Not a huge deal, faster than light technology exists in this future. And you know, in just three months time, they can be back home. The problem, though, is that they don't have enough supplies to last that long. In fact, when they look at their rations, it only seems like they'll have a few days left before they die. So all hope seems kind of lost until they come up with a rather clever plan. You see, the ship has plenty of fuel. That's not a problem. And they realize that along the way, along their, their three month trip back home, if they can make little pit stops at planets along the way that have water and food, then they could theoretically get home by planet hopping. You know, going from planet to planet, getting supplies each time enough to last them to get to the next planet, and eventually they can make it home. And thus begins our fun interstellar adventure. The characters all get to know each other, we get to visit whimsical new worlds, it'll be a great time. But of course things aren't gonna go that smoothly because as these children get to know each other better, they start to realize that something's up and that them being transported 5,000 light years away may not have been a freak of nature accident as they originally thought. Because once they realize that they all have certain things in common with each other, they begin to suspect that there were much more sinister motives behind this whole thing. Now, I've made it no surprise in the past few videos where I've mentioned this series that I absolutely love it. In fact, I was kind of shocked at how good it was. Like, I heard good things, I was expecting it to be good, but not this good. Like, it, it, it made my top 10. Like, at this point, you, got, you gotta be fucking amazing to get there. But why is that? What makes this series so special? Well, it pretty much does everything right, and it has everything I look for in this type of series. It starts off as a very fun sci-fi adventure story. You know, they're going from planet to planet, you never know what you're gonna run into. They run into all sorts of crazy shit. Planets with hostile environments, planets with hostile aliens, it just constantly throwing challenges their way, how they have to adapt and overcome these challenges, how all of these characters use their specific skills to help out the group. Now, the series can also be really fun and lighthearted. There's a lot of comedy in here too, but it really knows when the appropriate time for that is. You're not going to have any goofy gags during any of the more serious moments. It doesn't take away from any of the stakes or the suspense. It's all just fantastic stuff. But that is not why this series is so amazing. If the series was just that, it would have been really solid, but nothing to write home about. But once shit hits the fan in this series, it becomes an entirely different monster. I alluded to some sinister stuff going behind the scenes, and uh, holy shit, man. <laughs> There's this underlying mystery to the whole series. You're trying to figure out why why these kids were, were shot 
5,000 light years away. And as the series goes on, we get bits and pieces, just little hints as to what's really happening. And when it is all finally revealed, it is one of the best plot twists I have ever seen in a manga. It's one of those things where you're like, hold on, that's fucking insane, how can that be true? But then once they start to explain it and once you go back and realize that it was all planned from the beginning, it just all comes together and clicks and it's like, oh man. Holy shit! And the first time this happened, I that, that's when I knew that this series was really something special. But then it doesn't fucking stop. It keeps going. It, it goes twist after twist, reveal after reveal. It just, just keeps going. It doesn't stop. It's the wildest thing I have ever seen. And the best part is that every single twist is earned in this series. Everything makes perfect sense. It's so well told and so smartly done. I was at first worried it would fall a bit short because as I was reading it, I, I noticed like a lot of things that didn't add up, but the series is so smart about that too and that so are the characters. The characters question shit. When they first ended up in deep space, I, my, my first instinct was, I bet this is all a test. Like this is their real space camp, the, 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 it's just the school testing them. And then immediately after, the characters suggest that too. I'm like, oh shit, yeah, we're on the same page here, awesome. That happens so many times throughout the series. I, I love it when that happens, when, when the characters aren't idiots. Another example of something that didn't really add up to me was uh, the, the, this whole advanced society in the year 2063. You're telling me in 40 years we're gonna be here? NOT SCIENTIFICALLY POSSIBLE! And like, I was always wondering, I'm like, why was this ship randomly stranded in deep space? Why is this here? Why is that there? Why does this work like it does? At first I just thought these were all convenient plot devices that were just there and they're not gonna explain it. But they do, and it's fucking brilliant. Brilliant. And yeah, after just, just a huge tidal wave of crazy twists and reveals, they really stick the landing with the ending as well. I was fully satisfied when I finished this story, and honestly, my only complaint about the entire thing is that I kind of wish it was longer. Other than only five volumes, it's really commendable how Shinohara was able to tell such a fantastic story. A story that wouldn't be nearly as good without the excellent cast of characters. So there are nine central characters in this story. There's not really a main one. You could easily make the case that it's Kanada. They do appoint him as the captain, and he probably does have the most importance to the story. But really, all of these characters are just fantastic. They start off as complete strangers. They don't know each other at all, so, it, so we get to see them grow closer as they face all these challenges, become close friends by the end. And the amount of characterization and development they get is so insane. I loved every single one of these characters by the end. I knew everything about them. This five volume series has more development than all 74 volumes of Bleach. Yeah, you know, I, I have to make a Bleach joke every now and then. Each character is so distinctly different. Each one brings so much to the story and so much emotion. But there's something else, something else that makes these characters so wild. Really early on in the series, when they start suspecting things aren't right, they also also start to suspect that one of the members on this ship might not be who they say they are. They might be full of shit, but they don't know who it is. So for a vast majority of the series, you are second guessing everything. You have no idea if any of these characters are being genuine or not. It adds a crazy level of suspense to the series because you have no idea when shit is about to hit the fan. And shit does hit the fan multiple times, but you never see it coming. So yeah, overall a fantastic cast of characters. Of course, there are some minor characters, but mostly in flashbacks and stuff because this whole series does take place in, in, on their space journey, but they're all really, really fantastic. Now as for the art, it's, it's great. Like, there are really no complaints here. Really, really good for a weekly manga. I know, I know this guy had another Shonen Jump manga before this one, so, you know, he, he's had quite a bit of practice, and he's great. A lot of interesting composition. The space shit is really cool. Character designs are great and super memorable. You know, a bit questionable on those spacesuit designs, but, you, you know, you, you, you got the demographic to sell to. There's a few panels in particular that really stick with me. Like, like oh, they're, they're so good. Oh, I love this manga. <laughs> this manga so much. So those are my thoughts on Astra Lost in Space. And I I really have nothing bad to say about this one. It's not as deep and complex as something like Monster. It's not as intricately written as something like Vinland Saga. But as a sci-fi adventure series, it does nearly everything right. 
and I cannot recommend this one enough. Yeah, we're doing it. 10 out of fucking 10. You gotta read this series, guys. It, it's so accessible. You have no reason not to. There's only five volumes out. They're all in print and available from Viz. And the whole series is also on the Shonen Jump digital service. You know, it's $2 a month. You can read the entire series there. If you don't have it, you can, you know, you can just get the free trial. And it's so short, you can just read it all during the free trial. Now, if you've already read Astra and love it as much as I do, maybe not as much as I do, but, but you know, as long as you enjoy Astra, I would also recommend Planetess, which is uh, another space series, but it's much more on the serious side, very complex, psychological, character-driven stuff. On the opposite end of the spectrum, if you like these ensemble casts, you like you like these great characters well-developed doing goofy shit together, I'll recommend, and I'll never stop recommending this until I die, Yamada Kun and the Seven Witches. That's a great one. Check that one out. And with that, thank you all so much for watching. You can leave your thoughts on Astra in the comments below, and I will see you all very soon for another full series review of a series that I've been wanting to talk about for quite some time.